On today's show, BMW unveils the all-electric iX concept SUV and promises that it will come to market very soon. What consumers think of Tesla and the Sunflyer 2 takes off into the sky on a beautiful maiden flight. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and I've been busy scouring the internet for cool transportation and energy stories to share with you this week. As always, thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show in Beijing, where BMW unveiled the all-electric concept iX3 SUV. Previewing a production vehicle we can expect to see on the market in about two years' time, the iX3 concept is powered by a battery pack that BMW says is greater than 70 kilowatt hours, produces more than 200 kilowatts at the wheels, and comes with a range in excess of 250 miles, or 400 kilometers, on the new WLTP test cycle. There's not a huge amount of information about this, what with it being a concept car, but it's worth noting that the iX3 concept looks just like the regular X3 SUV, which should gain it plenty of fans. Throw in 150 kilowatt quick charging and plenty of room for luggage, and this is a very interesting car indeed. I'll let you know when BMW is ready to share more information, and as always, I'll share it with you. For the past 10 years or so, the name Tesla has become synonymous with fast, powerful, luxury electric cars, and its unique attitude to sales and service has also gained it great reputation when compared to many traditional auto brands. But YouGov's latest brand index shows that Tesla's buzz score, essentially how the brand is viewed, has fallen quite significantly of late, dropping from 10 to negative 0.8 in just one month. This puts Tesla below many mainstream brands. The answer to a second question, revolving around whether people thought Tesla represented good or poor quality, has also fallen of late, dropping from 23 in early March to 14.7, the lowest the brand has suffered since the start of 2017. Luckily, Tesla does come out above GM and Volkswagen in this question, but it does show that outside the EV world, Tesla's reputation isn't what it once was. Volkswagen may yet have to make any meaningful impact on the electric vehicle world in terms of production electric cars, but this week it unveiled a custom-built race car that it hopes will help it earn some much-needed electric car brownie points. Enter the Volkswagen IDR Pikes Peak, a single-seat, super-lightweight racer that Volkswagen will enter into the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in June. Piloted by Romain Dumas, who won both the 2016 and 2017 races in an internal combustion engine car, Volkswagen says the IDR Pikes Peak sets the trend for its future in motorsport and is of great symbolic significance. We'll have to wait until June to see if it lives up to that hype. The all-new 2018 Nissan LEAF hasn't had the easiest of times since its launch late last year, getting flack for its restricted DC quick charging speed after the second or third rapid charge on a long-distance trip. But this week, there was some good news for Nissan's family EV after the European crash test body Euro NCAP awarded it a five-star rating. Taking on the new 2018 crash tests, which include for the first time new tests for pedestrian and cyclist protection, the LEAF managed 93% for adult passengers and 86% for child occupants in terms of scores. In protection for vulnerable road users, though, the LEAF scored a 71%, the same as its score for safety assistance technologies, making it the safest electric car that Nissan has produced to date. If you're interested in the full report, I'll link to it in the show notes below. After years of flip-flopping on electric vehicles, Nissan's luxury brand Infiniti has confirmed that it's building a brand new vehicle platform exclusively for electric vehicles, and it will be based on the Q Inspiration concept car. As a brand, Infiniti has promised that it will go electric from 2021 onwards, but dig a little deeper, and in this case, electric means electrified, which does include hybrid and plug-in hybrid, as well as hydrogen fuel cell vehicles into the mix. 2021 will be the year we'll first see an all-electric Infiniti model, however, and the company says it hopes that more than half of its global sales will be of electrified cars, there's that word again, by 2025. What isn't so clear, however, is why it's taken Infiniti so long to jump on the electric bandwagon, especially as it displayed its first electric concept back in 2011, and its parent company, Nissan, has been plugging cars in for nearly a decade. 
Aside from being one of the fastest growing markets for electric vehicles, China's luxury car market is also growing at an astonishing rate, with automakers even designing and building special long wheelbase variants just for the Chinese market. It's no wonder then that the Beijing Auto Show was the place Mercedes chose to unveil the Maybach Ultimate Luxury Concept, a highbrow all-electric SUV that combines 550 kilowatts of all-electric all-wheel drive power with an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, 350 kilowatt DC quick charging, and of course, all the luxury you can imagine. It's not clear if this will ever make it into production, but considering just a few years ago, we'd have never dreamed of seeing an all-electric Maybach, it just shows how seriously big brands are finally taking EVs. Staying in China, Toyota used the Beijing Auto Show to confirm that it intends to bring a slew of new plug-in models to China over the next few years, including an all-electric version of its CHR crossover. Given China has been pushing hard for automakers to make the switch, it's no surprise that Toyota is among the automakers trying to get another electric vehicle into its lineup. But for the automaker who has bashed electric vehicles almost constantly in favor of hybrid and hydrogen for the last decade, it's unclear if this all-electric CHR will be Chinese only or if we'll see it elsewhere in the world. With a launch date of 2020, we've got a few years to find out. As electric vehicles have increased in popularity, we've seen more and more local and regional governments mandate that new buildings be designed with electric vehicle charging infrastructure in mind. To date, though, we've seen very little on national scales. Until now, that is, because the EU Parliament has just confirmed new legislation that will require all new and majorly renovated buildings with more than 10 parking spaces to be built, with dedicated high-power wiring in place for later installation of electric vehicle charging stations. Additionally, these buildings will need to commission and install at least one charging station before they are commissioned themselves, which should make electric vehicle infrastructure more ubiquitous across the entirety of the EU. It's not become law yet, but it's hoped that it will be approved in the next few weeks and become law shortly thereafter. Volvo, Polestar's parent company, has announced that it hopes to have 50% of all Volvo car sales to be electric by 2025. Additionally, this does include vehicles sold in China, where Volvo is working hard to claim a big market share. Yet again, however, Volvo's use of the word electric and electrified is a little nebulous, so it's difficult to put an exact figure on just how many all-electric models Volvo hopes to be producing and selling by 2025. Either way, with the number of plug-in models promised to hit the market in the next few years, I think electric will undoubtedly soon be the fuel of choice for many consumers. What do you think? And Finally, the world of electric flight may still be some way from being ready to offer us commercial short haul. But earlier this month, Bi Aerospace announced that its prototype Sunflyer 2 aircraft had completed its maiden test flight, showing that single-engined electric flight is just around the corner for everyone. What makes this particular airplane interesting is that it's built specifically as a flight trainer, a lightweight, easy to control aircraft that flying schools can use to teach people to fly. With the operating cost of $3 per hour, that's 10 times less to fuel than a conventional piston engine flight trainer, it will soon be followed to market by a four-seat version called the Sun Flyer 4. Both, by Aerospace says, will be the first FAA-certified US-sponsored all-electric planes that you'll be able to buy. There's no word on pricing yet, but when I have it, I'll share. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. And in the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.